Welcome, my name is Matt, or the Beast 34 and today I'll be conducting my first ever review video. I'll be giving my first impressions on the brand new Alienware X15 R1. The X15 is Alienware's thinnest gaming laptop to date. The specs I got on mine are the RTX 3070 with an 11th Gen i7, 11800H, 32 gigs DDR4, and a QHD display. I'll include chapters in this video in case you're looking for something specific. First up is what many people are interested in, and that's the battery life. In order to test the battery, I only played this YouTube video at 1440p with nothing else open on the X15. I set the test up in a realistic scenario where you're trying to somewhat optimize battery life while doing work or watching videos. I'll put all the information on screen now of what I changed the laptop to before I started this test. I ended up getting about 5 hours and 20 minutes of battery life after constantly playing the video. Keep in mind the settings I used and the fact that I started at 95% battery. You could probably get the battery life past 6 hours if you enabled every battery saver option and turned down the brightness even more. If you'd like me to do a specific test to see what the battery is while playing a game, leave a comment down below and I may include that in a follow up. I ran all the following tests on Alienware's performance preset. For PUBG, the FPS when not plugged into the charger was significantly less than when the X15 was plugged into the charger. On Ultra Graphics, PUBG's average FPS with the X15 plugged in ranged from 90 to 110. The FPS while unplugged, on the other hand, was 50 to 60 FPS. On High Graphics, the average FPS when the X15 was plugged in varied from 120 to 140 FPS. When the X15 was not plugged in, PUBG ranged from 60 to 80 FPS on High. When playing Warzone, I plugged in the X15 and I did not turn on DLSS or ray tracing. I played on mostly max settings at 1440p and that resulted in an average FPS of about 120. However, I experienced some frame drops with these settings. It appeared there was some thermal throttling with Warzone, although I was able to get a more stable FPS with less drops when I lowered the graphics settings slightly. As for benchmarks, the X15 performed pretty well for a thin gaming laptop. The benchmarks for TimeSpy varied slightly. The score got lower and lower if I ran consecutive benchmarks because the laptop still had retained significant heat from previous tests. The first TimeSpy score I got was 98.44. After performing several updates, including NVIDIA driver updates, I got a score of 97.52. When running Firestrike, I initially got a score of 21.454. After doing the updates, I got a score of about 20,000. In balance mode, idle temps for the CPU and GPU are both about 43 degrees Celsius. This remained the same when running the YouTube video. However, if you were to turn that to performance mode, the fans do get a little bit louder, but the idle temperatures go down to about 35 degrees Celsius. After running the YouTube video for about 5 hours, I felt almost no warmth at all on the bottom of the computer, and it remained pretty cool to the touch. When downloading updates and setting up the computer, the X15 got warm to the touch, but not to the point where it was uncomfortable. When running the 3D Mark benchmarks, the GPU maxed out at about 71 degrees Celsius. While playing Warzone, the computer got a little bit hotter, although the temps stayed under 80 degrees Celsius while playing on mostly maxed out graphics at 1440p. The keyboard did not get hot when playing games, although it did get warm. However, the underside and the edges to the left and right of the keyboard got very hot. And keep in mind, I did not use any cooling pads or anything like that. I simply put it on a flat wood surface. On the Alienware Balanced preset, when running the YouTube video, there was almost no fan noise at all throughout the entire 5 hours. When browsing during work, the fan sometimes kicks up to where it is noticeable but still low. However, if you wanted the fan to become even quieter, you could change to the quiet preset. That would result in higher temperatures. When downloading games or updates, the fan kicks up to where you can hear it several feet away. It gets loud but not to the point where it is annoying. When running the benchmarks, it got very loud. This is the point where you can clearly hear all four fans kicking in. It's not necessarily an annoying whining noise the fans make, it's just simply air being pushed out. While playing PUBG and Warzone on performance mode, the fans were loud as expected. They went near max speed, however they did not seem extra loud because of the four fans. There's a preset which will set all the fans to quiet. You can do that if for some reason your fans get loud while doing work. That requires minimum CPU and GPU usage. Overall, the fans get loud while doing benchmarks or gaming, but that is expected in a thin laptop. 
Now to just go quickly over the build quality, it feels pretty stable and light in hand. The X15 has a kind of rubberized coating on the whole lat side, which in my opinion makes it feel a little more premium and definitely feels more secure to hold. This smoother feel may be because they coated it in a high endurance clear coat for stain resistance. It feels vastly different from the hard plastic that covered my old Alienware 15 R3. The keyboard feels responsive and quiet when typing, although there's not necessarily too much feedback in terms of clicking on each of the keys. It's a standard Alienware keyboard if you've had one of those before. I haven't noticed much difference between this and my Alienware 15 R3 keyboard. In terms of the downside of the build quality, the screen, in my opinion, feels flimsy when you're adjusting it. This is because it shakes a lot when you're moving it up and down to adjust the screen. Now for the most important part, they made several changes from old models that you may not notice by just looking at Dell's site. The Alienware letters no longer light up, and the touchpad also no longer lights up. However, there is still plenty of RGB. What does light up is the keyboard, the power button, the large ring on the back, and the logo on the back. 100% RGB brightness is very bright, but you can tone this down by going into the Alienware command center, and here you can lower the brightness, change the RGB colors, or change the pattern in which they display. Basically, you can change anything in this command center if you're not familiar with it already. A quick visual comparison of the X15 versus the Razer Blade 15 2020 model, which has a 2060 in it, is that the X15 is essentially the same thickness as this Razer Blade model. It is only 0.4 pounds heavier, which isn't really a noticeable difference. The back part of the X15 is the part that makes its surface area bigger than the Razer Blade by about one inch. The bezels on the X15 are essentially identical to the bezels on the Razer Blade 15. So overall, in terms of size, the X15 is really not that different from the Razer Blade 15. Now for a quick comparison between the Alienware X15 and the old 15 R3. Like I mentioned before, the texture of the laptop just feels different. The X15 does not have that hard plastic feel that the older Alienware models have. The touchpad on the X15 is now slightly off-center to the left. It definitely feels weird at first, but it just takes some getting used to over time. The X15 has significantly less ports than the R3. One other change is that the X15 has its charging port on the left side instead of the back. In addition, the bezels on the X15 are significantly smaller than those on the R3. Overall, the X15 feels significantly lighter and slimmer than the Alienware 15 R3. The 240Hz QHD model came with NVIDIA Advanced Optimus. Optimus has been working pretty well for me. It has decided to switch between the CPU and GPU almost flawlessly. You can switch between these three options without having to restart your computer. However, I would advise against switching between the options after you have opened a game. This resulted in the game crashing several times for me. The Alienware X15 is surprisingly thin and has idle temperatures that are comparable to many desktops. The four fans are actually not as loud as I expected, unless you are gaming or running benchmarks, which is expected for a gaming laptop. When editing this video at 4K 60fps, I set the fans to quiet mode, and they were essentially silent but were still able to maintain temps just above 40 degrees Celsius. The biggest flaw I saw in the X15 was probably that the screen felt flimsy when adjusting it. In addition, I experienced some CPU throttling with Call of Duty Warzone, although with further testing I'm sure I could find a stable underclock or more stable graphic settings. Also, the 3D Mark benchmarks appear to be in line with several other QHD 3070 gaming laptops. The Time Spy score in the X15 was actually much better than the Razer Blade 15 Advanced equivalent. Overall, the X15 is a solid gaming laptop, and it's ultimately up to you if you want to purchase this laptop at the current MSRP of 2700 USD, although you should easily be able to get at least 10% off that MSRP. The best way to get a feel for the X15 is to see if a Best Buy near you has one on display. Anyway, that's it. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed my first review video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.